Welcome to the Blogger Genius Podcast, brought to you by Milo Tree. Here's your host, Jillian Leslie. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the show. Before I get started, I wanted to announce that we are starting our next coaching group for online entrepreneurs, and it is starting August fourth. If you feel like you're spinning your wheels, or if you've just started and you don't know what direction to go in, this is the group for you. So we help you build your business in real time. We show up live on Zoom with you. We give you weekly assignments. We hold you accountable if that's something you struggle with. And we really get to know you and your business. If this sounds interesting to you, you can learn more about it at milotree.com forward slash group. And even better, if you want to get on a call with me so that I can hear about your business and hear about what's working for you and where you're struggling and what this group can do for you, please go to milotree.com forward slash meet. So we can meet each other and we can have a a conversation and really figure out what is right for you and your business. So again, milotree.com forward slash meet and just sign, that's my calendar, sign up for a time and we'll get on the phone. For today's episode, I have my friend Sarah Williams from Frame by Sarah back on the show. I felt like there were things she said in our previous interview that I will link to in the show notes um, that I really wanted to unpack. I wanted to understand how she really put together her um, her boxes and also how she thinks about email marketing. I think there's a lot here in this episode. You know I love recurring revenue. That's what her business model is. I think you're going to get a lot out of this. So without further delay, here is my part two interview with Sarah Williams. Sarah, welcome back to the show. Thank you so much for having me again. I'm so excited to be here. I, we just, um, just before, before I pressed record, I said, here are the two, now it will probably include more things, but the two things I really wanted to talk about was the nuts and bolts to building a, a subscription box business. Like, what does that really take? And two, how you think about email marketing. In our last recording, you said your email list is like an ATM. And of course, like I went, we've got to unpack that. We've got to dig deeper. So let's first talk about, let's say um, I'm a knitter and I want to create some sort of themed box and, and sell it to my audience and it be a recurring revenue stream for me. It's new stuff for people to to get in the mail, a little present in the mail. What do, how do I think about this? So I think you and I discussed this right before we got on about how, what if I'm not Stitch Fix? What if I'm not Fab Fit Fun? What if I'm not Dollar Shave Club? How do I, can I do this? And the answer is really like, yes, you can do it. You don't have to go into this thinking you have to be a big gigantic company and you have to sell 10,000 boxes, um, but you have an audience, right? If you're a seller, if you are on e-commerce or brick and mortar, you sell things and you have customers and customers want to buy from you. So I look at a subscription box as being something that you're providing for your customer that is a great value and a convenience. So if you can combine those two things, you can really curate a special box for your customers. Okay. So am I thinking like, are there different experiences in the box? For example, like for you, I feel like you're giving people a monthly moment of celebration, celebrating yourself. But are other boxes about like, is it, I'm going to get stuff that's less expensive. You know, I'm going to get a deal and that's why I have a, that's why I subscribe. Is it, I'm going to get the newest stuff and trends. Like I was, I subscribed to Birchbox for a long time and I got like all this cool makeup every month and I'd be like, whoa, that's, you know, what new eyeliner, you know, what is the cool uh, nail polish trend, that kind of thing. So do I have to think of that thing up front? Like what is the goal behind my box? I think that if you, when you're starting a box, let's take the knitting example again. 
Um, so what you want to do for your knitting community, would, is it a project of the month? Are you creating a project for them that you can teach and train and then your box is all the supplies for that project? Is it that they get the newest VIP yarn that you have that's exclusive to you and they're a subscriber so that they can get the limited edition yarn? Is it because you're teaching them new tools to use or new techniques? So you have to kind of think about what is your niche already how can you hone in on that and really um, bring it down just a little bit? It's like even make it more specific because those are the boxes that are really going to grow. If you try to be a box for everyone, you end up being a box for no one. And then the other question you just asked me is, yes, what kind of experience do you want um, that subscriber to have? Is it for them? Is it a gift for them? Is it a project? Are you teaching them something? Do you want them to learn how to, how to do knitting? Do you, are they already knitters and you're teaching them like a higher skill level? Um, is it a convenience thing? Like we talk about Dollar Shave Club, like you use razors every month and it's just a replenishment and it's really convenient to know that that's going to pop in the mail. Like I have an ink subscription, like I get ink every single month. I know I'm going to run out of it. I know it's coming and I don't have to worry about it. And that's the benefit. It doesn't have to be a super cheap thing. Like I'm not getting, you know, ink at $5 a cartridge. Like that's not, the reason I'm a subscriber is the convenience. Um, it's the convenience for me. And sometimes that's more valuable than the actual dollar amount. So totally like you have I, to, I have yeah. this Amazon subscribe and save and therefore like every two months I weirdly get sunscreen because sunscreen's like that thing where you kind of don't want to run out of it but you're not really psyched about going to buy it and you forget when you go to the grocery store like I need to get the sunscreen and so I just have it show up at my house and I do that with like I don't know paper towels and it, like things just show up at my house like and I think we do it with printer and ink as well because you don't want to run out and you know that you're going to run through it at a you know at a certain pace so it's like oh okay it just shows up so i get a totally it's funny because i hadn't thought of those really as like subscription boxes but in a way they are yeah and so you can you can either do it out of convenience you can do it out of value you can do it out of an experience there's lots of different ways that you can create a box for your products or what you do. Now based on, so you have a community of people who um, who pay you per month to be part of your group of people selling boxes and you're a coach for them and, and you have resources and stuff. Of the people in your group, what would you say most of them, what, what kind of box are they selling? So you're selling an experience, right? Like a monogram. Yeah. Personal Mine's experience. a luxury experience, personal item. Um, they're all over the place, you know, like I have, um, I have a lot of kind of creatives in my, in my group. So they have like a craft box or a skill box, like a painting or an art or some kind of, I have a lot of those. I have home decor boxes. I have clothing boxes, t-shirt boxes, candle boxes. Um, there's a lot of different all over the place boxes inside my group. Um, it would be fun for me to, I need to create a poll in there and have them, what kind of box do you have? Um, but you can really do this with any product in any industry. And that's the thing that I want to get across is that it's not specific to a, a niche or an industry. It's a, it's a great thing across the board. So then how do I actually deal with the logistics? I want to create a box. Let's say, I, you know, so again, let's go back to the knitting thing. And like every month, let's say I'm going to do a different knitting project and you're going to have the supplies and all this stuff. How do I even get the physical boxes? How do I deal with the shipping? Like, how do I, how do I deal with like getting all the yarn? Like, it's just, it feels like to it be feels overwhelming. a logistical mm -hmm. nightmare. It feels overwhelming. And the first place that we start when they come into my launcher box coaching group is we do a post-it note challenge. And this is really just set a timer. You're writing on post-it notes and you're kind of putting all the little things, all the ideas you have for these different boxes onto a separate post-it note and you're just slamming them out and you're just sticking them on your table and you're just going for like 20 minutes. And then when the timer stops, you're looking at each month and kind of moving these around. What could I put in boxes? It's helpful if you can visualize what your box might be 
before you start thinking about the logistics or you just are like, well, that's too much. I'm that's what stop I think. Right here. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, by the way, I have to tell you, I look, I'm going to show you this. Nobody can see this because they're listening, but I am, I'm holding up a pack of post-its. I am the biggest post-it user ever. And I wish you could see my desk because all I do is do exactly that just in my life and in my business is mm-hmm. I have an idea, boom, it's a post-it on my desk. So I, I, that speaks to me of like brainstorming with post-its because it's very it. open-ended and you can move them around yes. and you can prioritize them. That's it's it. like a Trello board, but my mm-hmm. Trello board is on my desk and it's actually physical. That's exactly it because even when we get started, what we think we might use may not be exactly what ends up. So it's it's this working document. That's why I like to use the post-it notes because they can be removed and, and they can be changed and it's not ever set in stone. But then you start to think about, okay, I've got six months of yarn boxes that I'm planning out. Are those themed with color? Is it around a season? What can I, how can I make this an experience? Like we talked about on the last um, call we had together. Um, And then it's okay. So if I'm going to create this, I'm going to need yarn, right? So I'm, I'm going to need yarn. I might need those, um, those needles that you, I don't mean, I don't knit. So I'm just, I'm just making this up. So I'm going to need the tools. Um, I probably am going to need some kind of printable item to show them step by step. So I'm going to need to create some instructions. So I think about all the things that I might need, and then I'm going to start looking for them. If you are a yarn seller, you already know where to get yarn. You already have it in your store. You're already selling it. So that's a no brainer. Maybe you don't carry the tools. So now you need to start looking for a way to some tools. So can you go to markets? Can you use a global marketplace like Alibaba? Can you, uh, is there someone that you know that carries these that you can figure out how to, how to contact them? Can you go onto these brands' websites and see if you can come, become a wholesale um, buyer for these different tools that you might need? So these are different ways you can start to find these items. So now I have my yarn. I've got my tools. I'm going to maybe hire a little graphic artist to cr- maybe create some inserts for me that have instructions and they're real pretty and easy to follow. So now I have the things. Now I got to figure out how, what I'm going to put it in. And so I like for you to think about the products first because that's going to help you figure out the size of your packaging. Can this fit in a poly mailer? Does it need to go into a box? Like what, what is the structure of your items so that you can figure out your packaging? And we go through several modules of packaging and what you need in launcher box Um, but that way if you can see what you're going to put in that box Mm. it helps you visualize what you need and that's why I like for them to plan out six months first before we even start talking logistics because there's a difference in sending a poly mailer and a box the shipping is going to be way different the experience is going to be way different so if you can think about those things up front then all the little logistic pieces can start to fit together very easily and you don't feel overwhelmed. Now for you, okay, so right now it is end of June. So I assume you are done with your July boxes. Uh, And when did they go, like how, like are you working on your October box right now? Like how far in advance do you have to plan these out? So June has already gone out. We're getting ready to start packing July. I just finished um, the inserts and some of the designs for August that are going to be on my printed materials, but I have planned my boxes through March 2021. No way. Okay. I'm like, I like to work six months at least. And if I can go nine months out, I feel real good about myself because it helps me plan. And it's not all the items in each one of these boxes, but the main item and some of the supplement items are already figured out so that when I get closer, I can add in a little bit more detail. But I know what my themes are. I know what my color palettes are for the for the next nine months. And that will help me um, put all the finishing pieces, pieces together. Now, here's the thing. You're trying to grow your business. How do you deal with inventory nine months out? How do you know how many people? You know, you don't want to overbuy. You don't want to underbuy. What do you do? So my subscription is, my box subscription is on a closed membership model. 
So that means it is not open all the time. So I right now I have a set number and that is the number of boxes that I have. And I'm going to have that number next month, the next month, the next month. And then when I want to plan an increase, I'm going to increase it by a hundred boxes. And then that will be what I'll order for the next month after that. And I just kind of stair step it up. Now you will always have cancellations every single month. So when a cancellation equals, I have an, an extra box sitting here that I still need to sell. And so what I do is I create a wait list for them. And every time I'm talking about my boxes, I'm posting the link to join the wait list. And so when I get done with sending all the, or, you know, I'm, I'm ready to send July and I realize I'm going to, I have 30 extra boxes because I may have had 30 cancellations last month. I go to my wait list and say, here's a little sneak peek of my July box. I have 30 boxes left. The first 30 to sign up will get these. And boom, I've got 30 signups. All my boxes are sold and I'm not having to worry about this excess inventory that I'm sitting on because I had cancellations last month. And you're going to have cancellations. It could be anywhere from like 3% to 10%. You know, if you're under 5%, that's a good number. Um, but 5% of 2000 is a lot of number is a yeah. lot of boxes. So I've got to make sure that I'm constantly building a wait list in between each month. Um, so that I can sell those and I'm not sitting on excess inventory. So therefore you kind of can project what your inventory mm -hmm. is going to look like, say in six months. Yeah. I know exactly what I'm going to sell in March, 2021. I already have that increase built in. I already have the plan on the calendar of when I'm going to launch and open up new subscriptions. And my hope is, and what has worked so well over the last few years is that I keep building that wait list so there's never an imbalance of numbers each month. That number, if you don't have a wait list, that number will continue to go down every month. And then if I've ordered six months out, I'm sitting on an extra 150, 200 pieces, and that is not good for anybody. Got it. Now, did you have to learn all this yourself, like piece by piece? I did. And you know, it's, uh, it's one of those things when I started, um, there wasn't there wasn't a place where I found that I could learn about subscription box. It was pretty new. Like people were doing it, but it was just the big companies, the little companies weren't doing it yet. And so it's just one of those things that you just try and you learn. And I've made a lot of mistakes along the way. I mean, a lot, like let's not get it twisted here. I have made some mistakes, but I think that for me, I look, I listen and I learn. I'm constantly watching what other people are doing and I'm thinking, how can I implement that in my own business? And, and that's what has made me successful. And the best part about my coaching group is I've taken all these things that I've learned over the years and I'm just breaking them down and making them super easy for my members to not get caught up in all these little details and to really thrive and grow. One thing that I think a lot about is the unboxing experience. So I don't know how many people out there have bought a product from Apple, but if you do and you open it, it is a beautiful experience. You are getting so much delight. There's so much surprise and delight. It's like you can tell they focus so much on that experience. So my, and I, when you were showing me your subscription box, there is that little bit of like, ah, this is so cool. So could you just talk about how, and, and I think in our own businesses, even if we're not selling a subscription box, just the delight of delivering something to somebody matters. So how do you think about it in your own business and how do you see it successfully in other people's businesses? Because I use Apple as like the perfect example of this. And you're, you're talking about their packaging number one, right? The packaging is really wonderful. It feels and there's so good. And it, it's all these so, compartments oh, in there and you keep un, and they, undoing and, they and fit pulling it. so in. beautifully together yes. and oh, Yes. So packaging is a huge part of an experience, but it's not a make or break. And so what I teach my members is that use what you have in the moment. I don't ever want anyone to be not profitable because they spent all their money on their packaging. That is not worth it. If you've got to use the brown box for five months until you can afford the nice custom pretty box, then that's what you've got to do because our number one goal is to be profitable. Um, but what else can you add to that box? Can you do a printed, like I do a lot of printed quotes and stickers and then exclusive coupons, like all these little things put in your box, they cost very, very little, but create a great user experience. 
Mm, and like a little like, um, I always like it when you get a note from somebody that might be signed by them. It just feels, or somebody, I remember getting something from a small vendor and it had a lollipop in it. And just that, which I'm sure was very inexpensive, like a dum dum lollipop, but just getting it was like, ooh, you know, it just felt like a thoughtful touch. Because you didn't expect it. I you didn't expect to just it. get what you ordered. So when you got a little bit more, um, that that creates some value. So we're we're adding some stickers in this month. So we've I've created the design for the t-shirt and then I'm taking that design and putting it on a die cut sticker. And so it's just a little extra. They can put it on a cup, on their laptop, wherever. And every time they see it, they're gonna remember that shirt and they'll remember that they're part of my t-shirt club. So it's just a little bit extra and you can do it very inexpensively. I love that, but it is like a little bit of thought that goes Mm -hmm. into it. And like the benefit I think is it's, you know, this concept of surprise and delight, which is you want to do that little unexpected thing, that little dum dum lollipop or those stickers or whatever, just to get that little bit of like, oh, you know, a little, I don't know, just that, those good feelings. It's fun. That's what it is. You're delivering some fun. It's not, even if I got my printer ink and there was a little, you know, something in there, like Apple puts the little Apple stickers. They're branding something. You're, you love that sticker. And now you're walking around with their brand all over everything. It's just genius. And you know, if I got a little something fun with my ink, maybe I got a fun pen with their logo on it. I would be like, oh, that's really cool. So you can think about all those different things that you can add into your own subscription to create that surprise and delight moment. Yeah, like um, Glossier makeup, it, like started online. This is like, they did a pop-up shop showing my Glossier lipstick to Sarah. Um, they did a pop-up store in Austin. So my daughter who is 13 was like, we have to go. And we went, we bought some stuff and like, and it, like they had stickers and, and you better believe the stickers are on her laptop. Because that's like, a, you know, it's cool and it's, you want to be associated with this brand. And I thought to myself, oh my God, what brilliant marketing on their part. Because now my daughter walks around with Glossier everywhere. And literally, I think we bought like two things. Like it wasn't like, you know, we've gone all in on Glossier. We just, but now it's like, oh, that's cool. And so, yeah, doing something small. But I have to say that it made me kind of have that moment like, oh, that's cool. So, um, so I I totally get it. Your brand, you know, like if you're, if you've got stuff branded, it really up levels your brand as well. Given this uncertain time, as online entrepreneurs, all we crave is certainty. So what if I could promise you that growing your social media followers on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, YouTube, plus your email list could happen automatically. All you need is a blog or a site you own and some visitors. And I guarantee that the Milo Tree pop-up app will automatically convert those visitors into followers and subscribers, and you don't have to do a thing. We are no longer living in the world as it was. I think we're all realizing the importance of nurturing our online businesses so we can have freedom to live the lives we want. But in order to get there, we have to manage our scarcest resource, time. So let Milo Tree do the heavy lifting for you when it comes to growing followers and email subscribers, and you spend your time creating content, solutions, products that serve your audience so you can start seriously monetizing your blog. So here's my advice. Stay consistent, kill the perfectionist in you so you can get stuff out there quickly. Touch yourself with kindness, embrace the mess, and go make a couple of smart choices like using Milo Tree on your blog to grow your followers and subscribers so you don't have to worry about that. Sign up now for Milo Tree and get your first 30 days free. There's really no risk. 8,000 other bloggers just like you are using Milo Tree right now to grow their businesses. Please, Pause this episode and head to MiloTree.com to sign up for your free trial. With all the worry we're feeling, this will give you one less thing to worry about. So what are you waiting for? Hit pause, head to MiloTree and sign up today. So tell people about your upcoming, like what you're offering in terms of uh, your subscription group, uh, membership, that kind of thing for people who want to go deep and try and really start building out a box. 
Yeah, so it's perfect for anyone that wants to start a box. If you're thinking, I really want to do this in my business, but I don't even know the first thing to start with, it's perfect there. Or maybe you have a subscription box and you just really want help growing it. Um, that's great too. We have members from not having a box to having 500 subscribers. So it is for all levels. And what's included in the membership is this great base of core training. So I record these modules every month. Um, it's logistics, it's shipping, it's packing, it's buying wholesale, it's launching. It, you know, today I recorded um, a module about print items and perceived value of your items. And so you get this great base of core training right when you walk in the door. So it's all there. And wherever you're at on that scale of starting a box or having a box, you can dig in and get some training. And then what the membership provides is we do Q and A's. So I show up, you get access to me on the front lines every single month. I show up in there live once a week. We do box openings. So I open other members boxes and give great feedback on them, how they can improve their processes. We have guest speakers. We've had, you know, the CEO of Packlane came in. We had um, an executive from FedEx talk about shipping. We've had um, someone from ShipStation join us. So all these things, you're just getting constant training and you have constant access to me. And the best thing about the membership is that it is full of like-minded entrepreneurs yes, yes, that yes. are doing the exact same thing. They help each other. They encourage each other. They're answering each other's questions. They're showing some fun item they got and then where you can go buy it too. So it's really a great community to be a part of. I, now that opens, yeah. it's, it's a closed membership. So I'm not open all the time. Um, it opens July 23rd and I'm not sure when I will launch again. It will probably won't be till the fall. Um, so now's the time to get in and start, start building that because wouldn't it be awesome to have a box going into the fall of this year? Right before Christmas. Christmas. Absolutely. Yes. And what a great yes. gift idea also. Yes. You know, we have a membership as well for bloggers and online entrepreneurs in different niches. And, uh, but same idea, which is, I think there is so much power in being in a group with like-minded people learning from each other. But like, it, it, it's like, I, I feel for us, everybody is facing very similar challenges and having slightly different niches, kind of like for you, having people with different kinds of boxes, you learn from somebody, let's say you're for us, like a food blogger versus like a homeschooling blogger. It's like, huh, I never thought of the world like the food blogger does, yet that's kind of relevant to my own business in this certain way. Like maybe I could take what they're doing over here and bring it into my niche or my lane over here because we're all kind of facing the, you know, for you guys, it's all about, you got to get a box out every month. Mm -hmm. And so and it, go ahead. it's really cool to see what other industries do that maybe you wouldn't have thought about. No. And so it really opens your mind to all these different things. I find too, the, it, I call it like the cross pollination is very, very powerful because it's very easy to get stuck in your lane and to, th and then you might, let's say, even have friends who are other food bloggers weirdly there's a lot of group think there there's a lot of like this is how we do it as food bloggers and all of a sudden you step out of that you see somebody else doing it differently and you're like whoa why can't i do that so i think there is so much value in being in a group of people like yes you get to be the leader of it and you probably have more experience than anybody else however I bet you too kind of find stuff that other people are doing or like hey where did they source that or whatever and it's like wait I can even take this into my own business so there is something very powerful and you know about being on the internet and being able to connect with people who are doing stuff in new and exciting ways that like maybe you're your mother or your sister or even your spouse doesn't understand. Your best friend does not understand. But there are these people out there on the internet who understand. And there's so much value in that. 
talking with your husband or your best friend about your dang subscription box, like there's come a point when your friend stopped ask, asking you to go to lunch with them, right? Because they're tired of hearing about it. So it's like, if we can all geek out and talk about subscription boxes together and it's fun. And then when we go home or we're with our friends, we don't have to, you know, can I get your feedback on this? No, I already got it inside the group. I don't, I, I'm good. Totally. Like you guys, I'm sure could so geek out on tissue paper. Oh, we could. <laughs> right? Yeah. And it's like, wow. Whereas then you don't have to show your best friend 30 different ty types of tissue paper and discuss yeah. like the, I don't know, the thickness or the color or whatever. So I totally get it. All right. So let's, so, so if people want to learn more, where should they head to for that? So they should go over to launch your box with Sarah and that's with an H. Sarah with okay. dot com. Okay. And right there, you're going to get on my waiting list if we're not in launch mode right now, but we open July 23rd and we're only open for five days. Okay. So you want to get on that waiting list now because then you'll get the emails and you'll know exactly when I am open and you can grab a spot in launch your box. I love that. Okay. Now can we segue to email yeah. marketing? Okay. Because when you said this thing, my email list is like an ATM. I'm like, let's dig, it, dig into that. Okay. So Talk to me about how you, th like broadly, how you think about email. Like, first of all, what service, email service do you use? I use Klaviyo. Okay, I'm that's right. Huge, we talked about this. Yes, okay. Huge fan of Klaviyo um, because of its e-commerce powers. Mm -hmm. Now, if I wasn't necessarily on e-commerce, I don't know that that would be my first choice. But because it has so much um, I don't know, even know what it is. I call it magic. It has so much magic around your browse abandonment, what people are looking at without even adding them to a cart. Um, there are so many features that you can use. So Klaviyo is, is my deal. And really, as far as email marketing goes, I treat every week as a different campaign. Mm. So when you build an email, it's called a campaign, but I call the campaign the series of emails that will go out with that one specific topic. Um, so it's not just shooting an email out, like shoot it and you're done. And that's what a lot of people do. They're like, okay, I'm going to talk about my cup that I'm using today and what I put in it. And this is what I'm going to talk about. And here's where you can buy the cup. Here's the cup email. Boom. It's out. Made a few sales. Okay. I'm moving on. Now next week I'm going to talk about this. No, that's not what I do. So I create this whole kind of event around it. And I don't know if we talked about this last time or not, but um, I do this Facebook lives on Friday. And so um, what I'm doing is I'm generating one piece of content and I'm, I'm doing a live. I'm doing an email campaign and funneling it into my posts and my Pinterest. So let's, wait, let's break that down. Okay. Friday. Okay. And we talked about this a little bit in the last recording, but Fridays, you come on at 9 a.m., right? Mm -hmm. And you yes. talk about a product. Yeah, you Several do, products. You, okay, Usually products. Your, your favorite Friday finds, right? Yeah, okay. My Friday faves. Yeah. Fa faves. <laughs> okay. So you, let's say you're going to talk about three things. You've mm -hmm. got a cup. You've got a pen. You've got a something. A bag. A bag. Okay. And so you're like, hey, guys, here's what I got. And it's you do this for maybe 10, 15 minutes. Yes. Okay. Then what? What happens okay. to that video? So that video is now on my page and it's getting some juice already. So now I'm going to create my emails around this live and these products. So my first email, I usually send out three emails with an email campaign. So, so every week they're going to get three. every week. Okay. Well, they'll probably get two of them because okay. they're segmented. Okay. Right? And so I'll tell you, I'll tell you how that rolls. But so I create this campaign and I'm taught at first I want to drive them to this video. So my first email is, did you catch me live? And I do like a screenshot of me live like this, like I, nobody else can see this, but I'm just like talking <laughs> and it's my live. Right. Um, and so that makes them interested because, you know, I do different places around the store too. So if I'm doing it right here, like you can see the machines behind me. So they may want to click on that and see what's going on behind me. Um, and or I'm showing something in that and, live. So I want to pique their interest. That is linking to your Facebook page or you've downloaded yes. the video and like nope. put it somewhere. Okay. I'm sending them over to Facebook. Got so it. if they haven't seen it, I want them to go watch it because that gives me video views, that gives me Facebook juice, that it gives me all the things. Um, and then below it, I'm telling the story about what I'm showing. Like, you know, like the, the kind of a little bit of story and, and I probably don't, I, I know I don't put all the pieces in there. I maybe show them one thing that I showed and they can see the rest 
here at my video. So I'm driving traffic back to the video. Um, and so, or they can just click here and buy the thing if they so want. Let's, okay, thing. so remember we had three things. So are those mm -hmm. three things? So you said in the, in the text, so you have like, let's see, here's a, a screenshot of you. If you click it, it'll link to Facebook. They can watch mm -hmm. the video. In the email description, are you showing three photos of, you know, the three items, just one? one of them okay and i'm talking in depth about that one maybe it's the most popular thing okay uh, you know and maybe i'm holding it up in that video that i've screenshotted okay um i do lots of different things so it's not the same every single month i don't want it to be boring and i want it to be static and really like different so maybe i'm telling a story about this thing maybe i'm showing you different ways to use this thing multiple ways to style this t-shirt i'm wearing maybe i'm talking about uh, four pairs of earrings that go with the shirt that I'm wearing or whatever the case may be. I'm featuring something in this first email that was in the video. And there's an okay. image of it. Yes. Okay. And there's a link to buy it. Got it. But it only one link to buy one of the things in the video, not yes. all three. Right. Okay. So they can either go watch my video and there they're going to get the link to buy it or they can scroll past that and just buy it from there. Okay. So that's email one and that goes out the day after my live. So that would go out on Saturday. Saturday. Mm -hmm. And then uh, on Sunday, I'm going to go in and segment out anyone that has not opened that email. So I do that on Sunday afternoon. It's called my non open recent segment. And so I'm going to just send that again on with a Sunday. different, different subject line. Same thing. It's same exact subject? same. Wow. They okay. never opened it. They never right. even opened it. Right. So but they I did don't have to reinvent wow. it. Wow. Okay. Great. I love it. So I'm going to send that exact same thing out. I may change the subject line. That's the only thing I make because that might be the reason they didn't open mm -hmm. it. Um, so I'm going to just change that subject line, but the contents of that email is exactly the same. And what you can do in Clavio is just save your email template. And then when you send, make a new campaign, you can just pop it right in. You don't have to do any extra work. Then on Monday, I'm going to send another email um, and this goes to everyone, whether you opened it or you didn't open it, this goes to everyone. And this is different images and different text about the same Facebook Live. So maybe I'm showing the other images that I didn't show in the first one. I have a different subject line. I have different text, but it's all around the same thing. Now, are you, are you linking back to the Facebook Live again or was that only in those no. first two emails? So that Facebook yeah. Live is done not talking about it. Got it. I may, in this email, I may talk about people that have already bought the item from Friday, or I may be sold out of something and I can say, oh, these sold out in 24 hours. Um, or there might be a little like comment on my Facebook live about how they bought it and they're so excited and I'll share kind of that in there to get other people excited about that. So different strategies, again, I always want to mix it up. It's never like the same plug and play template. It's different things, but the content is leading back to that Facebook live. Um, and I've done lots of images with these different things. So I've done maybe three or four images of different items so that I can use different images on social media, on Pinterest, in the email, but it's all the same thing. So this email campaign then runs Monday. And if I really have um, a good, if I have good sales from that Monday email, I will send another non-open resend on Tuesday. If not, I just leave it at is and move on and start planning the next Friday. But that is my email campaign every week. And sometimes if I've got other things going on, I will sprinkle in some different emails, you know, a different times a week, but I don't ever want to over email. I think, <clears throat> I'm sorry. I think you can really lose the battle there if you over email and then people stop um, opening them all together. So I never want to be that. I never so want to be that person. Is the, how do you get onto your email list? Buying something from you? You can buy from me. I have a pop-up. So Clavio has pop-up features in there. You can embed lists on your pages. You can put the pop-up. So I have a pop-up. I gain anywhere from 300 to 500 new email subscribers a month from my pop-up alone. Wow. Wow. And, and all my pop-up is, is something they can download. Usually a print, like an eight by 10 print and a quote, an inspirational saying, because that's, that's kind of what my box is about is being inspired and kindness and all that thing, all that, all those things. So that's what my pop-up is. You never want your pop-up 
to be something that's not related to your thing. No, because he, then the, well, here's a question. Do you okay. do though what most retailers do, which is get 10% off? No. You don't because discount. I find th they don't use it. Mm. They don't use it. And so an eight by 10 print is something that's more tangible to them than a discount code. Interesting. And so I do not use discount. I'm not a fan of discounts in general. So I don't want it to be, I'm only going to buy this if I have a discount code. Like, right, you, I don't know, back in the day, we only bought pizza if we had the pizza cube. Totally. I will not we buy the JC pennies. Yeah. We, we, oh my God. The gap, like they run now at like discounts all the time, but it's like, who would ever pay full price at the gap or banana Republic? Mm -hmm. Like you just are trained to never yeah. do that. So I completely, so I, that's not what I want. I, and I feel like it also devalues um, the products in my boxes. If you feel like you have to have a discount every time you log in or every time you buy something. And if you don't have a discount, you don't want to buy. So I have trained my audience that we don't, we do discounts. Like we just had a BOGO sale last weekend, but we don't do them all the time. They're rare. They're fun. They're a special event. It's not an ongoing thing. Um, I like a free gift way better than a discount. So maybe if you spend $50, you can get a free pair of earrings. I love that pop-up idea. And there's a coupon code for that. Um, and maybe those earrings cost me $3, you know, so it's a better perceived value on what you're getting than just a 10% off code. I love, how many people would you say are on your list? So right now I have about seven to 8,000. I, I purge it regularly um, because again, that skews your numbers. So I purge it about every three months, just completely purge it. And I can't remember those settings that I have exactly in Clavio, but there's a suppression segment. So it says, if you have not opened maybe my, one of my last 10 emails or something like that, because you know, I'm sending them every week. So it's very regular. Mm -hmm. if you haven't opened any of those. I don't, I don't want to keep sending to you because mm -hmm. that's going to hurt me. Mm -hmm. It's going to hurt how much I pay to Clavio every month that and you're not even. And by the way, them. I have to say Clavio is not cheap because again, they are very specific for e-commerce and they're very powerful, yes. but you're paying for that. You're paying for that. But I can tell you in just one of my flows that is set up automatically through Clavio, it pays my monthly Clavio by four times every single month. And that is a flow that I set up that I never have to touch. Um, so it's paying for itself mm -hmm. in a way that I couldn't do on my own. So, so that's my next question. Do you pe do you put people, they can have different names, like in an, in automations, like somebody joins your list yes. and they immediately boom, get sent uh, like through a different automation of yes. triggered emails. What does that yes. look like? So on Clavio, that's called a flow. I like to call it a funnel, but yeah. it's a flow. Um, so if you come in on my pop-up, so right now there is a print right there on my pop-up. Um, and if you come in on my pop-up, you're going to get an email that says, here's your download. And it's got a picture of the download. It's a high resolution, you know, download it here, blah, blah, blah. That's your first email. And then you're going to get another email in a day or two. I can't remember how I've set it up, but it says, don't forget your download. It won't be here long. I want to give them urgency to download. It's going to be there forever. <laughs> I, I want to give them some urgency to go ahead and get it downloaded. And that's what the subject is. So they'll open the email and then I have a shirt that they can buy as a one-time purchase. And it is somehow coordinated to that print. So right now the print on there says, be kind, be bold, be yourself. Well, this shirt says that too. So if you like this print, oh, I want to get the shirt that matches that too. So you're more likely to buy that shirt and it's a one-time purchase. I'm not asking you to commit to me yet. You're just, you're brand new to my world. I want to, I want to get to know you first. I want them to get to know me. I want them to buy a shirt one time. I want them to get it super fast. I want them to get their shirt and love I the love quality. It. Of yeah. It. yeah. And then I'm, then I'm going to hit them with another email. And this is usually four to five days later because I want them to get their shirt first if they bought it and says, did you get your shirt? Um, you know, and you can segment that, that, um, they bought the shirt from that email. So anyone that ordered that product, now they're, 
and you can you can spider it out like a like a funnel so if you bought the shirt you're going to get this email did you get your shirt yet do you love it do you want do you wish you had this every month join the t-shirt club here's what the next month's shirt looks like and so that's my funnel to get them into the t-shirt club now, if this one says, I didn't buy this shirt, you, ha you haven't placed this order for this item yet, um, it's an email like, what are you waiting for? Here, and then I give them lots of different shirt I, you know, options. Maybe they didn't love that shirt. Maybe it was the color or whatever. Um, so then I'm, I'm trying to hit them with a one-time purchase there. So that's kind of a, my, my flow of my pop-up. But you can do this for different things. So maybe I have a checklist of your beach summer packing um, items and that's pinned on Pinterest. And so that flow, if you come in off my beach summer packing slip, maybe is the next email is all my beach bags and, and what you can buy. And then, oh, maybe you would like my monogram box if you like the beach bags because I have a lot of bags in my box. So you can really create this and it's, it may feel overwhelming, kind of like the box thing we already talked about. You have to st you start with one. You start with one and you build it and then you see how it's working and then you build another one. And the great thing is, is you can take these flows and you can clone them. So you're not having to rebuild one every time. You can say, okay, I've got this new print I wanna add. I don't have to build a funnel from scratch. I can take my current one, duplicate it, change the shirt, change the messaging, change the print, and boom, it's ready to go. And that's what I do. I love that. Okay, and so those are your main, uh, what do you call it? flows? Flows. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the flow is like you have a welcome flow, so they've come in from a pop-up, or there's a specific you know, lead magnet that they've come into either on my page, on my blog, on Pinterest, and so those have a specific flow to them. So anytime I build a lead magnet, I have a flow on the back end. I use wallpapers. So um, I use like, a, you can't see this because I have too many notifications, oh, right. but I have phone yeah. wallpapers. Yep. And so if you've come in on a wallpaper, I try to select an item that would relate to that wallpaper um, to, you know, just to, to plug it there. Um, but also in Clavio, you have different flows. You can do car abandonment, which mm. everyone should have on any, yes. any platform. You have browse abandonment. So if you are already on my email list and you go over to my website, Jillian, and you start shopping, um, but you never put anything in the cart, you're just looking at things you're like, oh, I'm, I'm looking for ideas, but you never put anything in your cart and you're already on my email list. I know what you've been looking at. And so what I'm, what I have built in is the browse abandonment flow says, oh, Jillian, you looked at this item. You might want to grab it before we're sold out and has a picture of the thing you were just looking at. And so it's very similar to the cart, um, a cart abandonment, but you never put it in your cart. So that's a really smart thing. What else you can do. Um, and I just did this one this weekend. I had a BOGO sale. So, um, I ran this BOGO sale from Thursday to Sunday and on Sunday night and I had my email campaign. We went out Friday, Saturday all, and, and one Sunday. But also Sunday, I sent another email segmented. I had a bunch of tie dye tees left. So I really wanted to see if I could sell a few more tie dye tees on the BOGO sale. So what I could do is I could go in and create a segment. It's anyone who has looked at these tie dye tees more than once in the last 14 days and put them on a segment. And there was 450 of them. Okay, 450 people had looked at these tie dye tees in the last 14 days. More than and once. Not purchased. Right. More than once, but had not purchased them. One, beca I chose these tees one because I had an ad running, so I knew there was a lot of clicks on that ad, um, and these were in the email, and they were I was wearing them on the Facebook Live and all the things, so there was a lot of interest in them. But for whatever reason, someone had not purchased them. So I sent a very targeted email saying, this is your last chance to get these tie dye tees on BOGO and why choose when you can have them both. There was two of them because it's the BOGO. And so I sent that out just to those 450 people. And when I do a segmented um, email like that, um, I usually get a, 
about a 40 to 50 percent open rate and i typically get an eight to ten percent click rate on that so because it's very very targeted and that's what clavio lets you do it lets you see it lets you like stalk people if that's i mean it lets you say like i know what jillian's been looking at on my website i'm gonna hit her with an email you can do that with a discount like do you want five dollars off i see you looked at this thing do you want five dollars off buy it now you can do whatever you want it kind of helps me with like end of the month when you're trying to hit your goals or if you have excess inventory and you want to try to sell some stuff it's really powerful and that's what i love about clavio i now i totally understand how your email list is like an atm machine and how mm -hmm. creative you can get with it and yeah, what i really love fun. for you is how all the pieces of your business come together for example you're wearing the t-shirt in your facebook live you know, or the way that you think about packaging each week with certain products that you're going to push that week. So it's not just yes. randomly like in your store going, what should I write about today? But it's yes. like, you know where your focus is and where, um, and in a weird way, you're selling a lifestyle. That's it's exactly you know? what it like is. Like, it's not like you, like, who needs another t-shirt, right? I mean, we all... Everybody. Right? Everybody does. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but it's much more about, I need that lifestyle than I need that t-shirt. You know, I need that light, that t-shirt that says that thing about kind of the message I want to put in the world, whether it be be kind or something like that. Mm -hmm. Especially, I bet, during this crazy time, I bet those kinds of t-shirts sell. You can, like, tap into where people are and what, where they are emotionally and sell yeah. them stuff that touches that. Because, again, we're not going to be naked in the, like, if you don't sell me a t-shirt, I'm going to walk out naked. Right. It's not like, it's not like food. And this is right. the thing I was just interviewed by Clavio's blog. And you know, this was the thing about for me, like, especially during the COVID craziness, um, I don't know it was ever going to end, but it, for me, it was this realization that what I have, no one needs, like, nobody needs what I have. It's completely a want. And when I saw a surge in sales in the month of April, it made me realize how much people just need something for themselves and how I can show up and I can give that to them. And whether that makes them feel good when they're wearing it or feel good when they open it in the mail or just feel good about themselves in general, like that's what it's about. Like there's, I, there's nothing essential that I sell. Um, and so I, I'm reminded of that a lot, especially when my store got shut down because I did not sell essentials. Um, but it's, imp it's important to people. And I want to be that person that they will come to when they need something for themselves. I think that is so, I think that realization is so powerful. I really do. And especially during this time when we need comfort. Yes. So I love that. All right. So if people want to join your list, where should they head to to see what you're doing with email? With email, like I teach email inside Launcher Box. Okay. So there are email training in there. Okay. Um, but if they want to just get on my emails and see those, they can go over to my website. It's framedbysarah.com. Just wait for the pop up to show up and then you can put your email address in there. You'll get a fun print and you'll kind of see what that looks like on the other side. I love that. Or you that. can just start browsing and I'll hit you with another email soon I love soon it because you'll know because you're stalking. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Yeah. Well, Sarah, thank you so much. Honestly, like I, as I said, like you are so my good friend now. Um, thank you so much for coming back on the show. I love it. I hope, I hope your audience really gets some great stuff out of this too. I hope this got your wheels turning. Is there a way you could create a subscription in your business, a membership in your business, something where you're pulling people together um, with a sense of commonality, a sense of purpose, a sense of fun. Remember, please, if you are ready to up-level your business, whether it is new, whether you've been at this a while, but if you are feeling frustrated 
or you feel like you need a new direction or you need people behind you, I want you to head to milotree.com forward slash meet and sign up for a time so that I can get on the phone with you and I can hear what you are dealing with, what your goals are, what your dreams are, and see if David and I can help you get there. So remember, this is for our six-week Milo Tree Entrepreneur Group where we, in real time, help you grow your business, we hold you accountable, and it's fun. And especially in this uncertain time, it's really nice to show up for each other with something that we all can control and cheer each other on. I think it's incredibly powerful. If you want to learn about it, go to milotree.com forward slash group. But first, go to milotree.com forward slash meet and really get on the phone with me. I would love to hear from you. And I will see you here again next week. 